my brothers and sisters, and welcome to another episode of A Word with Pastor Webb. I'm your host, Pastor Webb, and we have two very special guests tonight, Dr. Peter Hines and Dr. Nicole Hines, my friends, my new friends. Please help me to salute and celebrate my friends. We're not going to prolong the time. Um, what's your story? How do you guys grow up? Rich, poor? So, yeah, I grew up in a yes, middle-class family. We didn't have much, but whatever we had, we made the best of it okay. in order to like, move forward. So, um, didn't have most of the things that we need, but we worked with what we had just to get to the stage that we are right now. Okay, okay. Yeah. For you? So I, I grew up in Barbados, uh, which is a small island in the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, my family was generally a, a more uh, middle-class uh, family. Uh, my parents, uh, my mom was a nurse and my father uh, was a professor of economics. And our, you know, there was a great focus on education in my family. Um, I'm one of four girls, and I'm one of four physician girls in my family. I, one of my sisters is a dentist, and the other two are also physicians. Um, I, I would say we had a pretty uh, good life, good upbringing. Our parents tried to instill the right values in us and tried to make us appreciate what we had around us and tried to appreciate people. Okay, okay. Now, you guys have been married for how long? 11, 11 going 12 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, 11 going wow. 12 years, man. How did you guys meet? Was it love at first sight? You looked into her eyes and you looked into her eyes, the birds flying backwards. Uh, how, how did you guys meet? Was it love at first sight? Talk to me. Peter, you oh, go first. It was, it was definitely love at first sight. Um, she, you know, to, it took a little bit of convincing, but it did work <laughs> out in the end. <laughs> you get a twist her arm. Yeah, twist her arm a little bit. Uh, but she did warm up. Um, later on, came around. We did go on some few dates, and at that point, you know, for me, I knew, you know, she was the one for me. And at some point, she was convinced too. I'm sure. So mm -hmm. that's why she's here now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pastor Webb, which version you want? You <laughs> want his version, version or do you want my version? Give me your version. Okay, so it was summer of 2004, and I came to the U.S. to visit my sister in New York. Okay. And my sister says, oh, you know, Nicole, let's, let's, go, to, let's go to lunch in uh, Queens, New York. And I said, fine, let's, okay, that's fine, we're on vacation. I just finished medical school. I was, on, was feeling on cloud nine. Um, so we went to the restaurant with a friend of hers, and in walks this tall, dark, handsome man. And I'm like, oh. I don't know him. I'm not going to speak to him today. I came in after that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes in, he sits at the table, and he says, hi. And I'm like, hi. And then I just go about my business. And later that afternoon, he says to me, hmm, do you want to go to a movie? And I said, who are you talking to? You're talking to me? And he's like, yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that's how the story went. Okay. So, you know, we had to make it a little difficult for him, you know. Nothing that's worth having never really came easy. So okay. I had to give him a little bit of a challenge. Per perfect. <laughs> great, great. Now, at this point, I need each of you to tell, tell me a few moments, give me a few moments of, about your profession. Tell me, give me your titles and tell me what you actually do. Go ahead, Nicole. So I am a, a general uh, pediatrician, uh, okay. so I take care of uh, kids ranging from ages zero up to 21. Okay. I work closely with families to uh, counsel them about uh, kids' uh, growth development okay. and also just general uh, questions and concerns that families may have. Um, I also work with them to maintain the health of their kids, uh, see them for sick visits as well. Okay. I also function as the medical director of uh, pediatrics at Lakeland Regional Health, and I am pretty much the, uh, the liaison physician uh, where I represent the pediatric physician group, and I work closely with the administrative staff to create policies and try to uh, ensure that we, we um, offer the best uh, care for our patients and also we uh, have the best environment, work environment for the staff as well too. Perfect. Peter? Okay. 
So I'm a um, urologist and a urologic oncologist. What that means is that I take care of both men and women and um, children that are post-pubertal with any sort of urologic diseases. So anything that involves disease of the adrenal glands, the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder, the prostate, um, the testicles, the genitalia. So anything involving that. It could be cancer or non-cancerous. It could be um, limited to stones. It could be limited due to um, just any medical, even urinary tract infection. So uh, I deal with that in terms of the general urology side. I also have a, um, my specialist in oncology, meaning that I treat a lot of cancer patients. Um, and with that, I also do a fair number of what we call minimal invasive surgeries to treat those diseases, which involves a lot of laparoscopy, a lot of robotics, a um, lot of um, endoscopic surgeries. And most of those are done in the hospital, but some are also done in the office space. My other hat that I wear is as the medical director of urologic oncology at the Hollis Cancer Center, which is under Lakeland Regional Health. And through that hat, I'm able to help with improving the care of patients who are coming to that Hollis Cancer Center uh, for anything urologic. Um, it also allows me to improve on the technology that we um, obtained from the outside because again it's a surgical field so technology is always very important and you always have to be innovative so with that we look at what's out there look at what's the best for a patient population because everyone is going to be different and unique so we got to make sure that we meet the needs of all our patients that are coming to us all right so what's your mindset when you before you go into surgery you um, mindset is just trying to be calm, collective, have a plan. Okay. And having that plan means going to be a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Because everyone is unique. You never know what you're going to get into. So you got to make sure that you're ready for anything that comes into play. If you plan ahead also, if you need someone else to be in that surgery, because again, a lot of the surgeries, um, being cancer surgery, sometimes it involves um, having a surgical oncologist or a cardiothoracic surgeon available as well because sometimes you have to go into the chest to get you know certain surgeries done sometimes you have to do a lot of manipulation of the major blood vessels in the body in order to get um, the surgery done in a in, in the best manner possible okay okay wow uh, why did you guys choose this profession and at what point did you know that you were going to be a doctor Nicole, we start with you. I mean, simply, I mean, I always knew that I wanted to, in some role, uh, some way, just uh, help people, uh, which is the simplest uh, reason for going into medicine. I mean, I've been around medicine for my entire life. My mom was a nurse, so mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time at the hospital. And then, I, as I mentioned before, I have three other siblings who are also physicians. So I got uh, like a first-hand view at what it would be like to be in a medical career. And I, I, I'm a very given person, I'm a very caring person, so I felt like my qualities would be best served as being a physician. Um, I pretty much knew from when I was about 11 that I was going to go into medicine. And I, I, I had to know by then because I had to choose the subjects that I would uh, <coughs> do to allow me to go along that career path. Um, and that's, that's pretty much simply it. Okay. Peter? Yeah. So for me, while growing up in Jamaica, I my thing I didn't like going to the hospital, but I knew that I like I was compassionate. You know, I liked experimentation. So I experimented with everything. I there's, there's always something running around the yard. You know, in Jamaica, <laughs> so there's, there's lizards. There's all those things. But again, I I knew I wanted to be a surgeon. Right. And my initial thought was that um, I want to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. But again, as you go further in life, you get experience. The more experience you get, you kind of make that part a little bit more narrow, a little mm -hmm. bit more specific for your personality. So at the end of everything, I, the, specialist, the specialty that I chose was urology and urologic oncology because that's what best fit with my personality okay. in terms of serving patients and getting folks to where they need to be. All right. So you chase cats and dogs through the neighborhood? <laughs> No, well, it's, <laughs> I used to, you know, in, in biology, everyone goes after cut up that, the frogger right. stuff. 
for me, I started early with Lizard. I'm not sure it was a, it's some sort of calling. So <laughs> it, I didn't choose it. It chose me. It chose you. <laughs> and I just, you know, went with it. All right, all right, all right. Now, talk about your white coat uh, ceremony. And what did you remember from that? Um, so my white coat ceremony was, um, it's, it was a great feeling, you know, getting a white coat, say, yes, I'm at that point now. I could see patients and interact with them. And, you know, I usually walk around, you know, slouch a little bit, but getting the white coat, then your chest is <laughs> off. And it, it, it gives you that, that extra Pow. oomph and the, and the boost and the confidence. And right. you go out there and, you know, you want to make sure you keep it clean. You don't want any spots on it. But it, it was a great experience. Great experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nicole? Well, you know, with my medical school, we didn't have a white coat ceremony, but my parents bought my white coat, <laughs> and it felt just as good. Um, and, and just like Peter said, I, I felt like, oh, you know, the end is near. Uh, I felt like, you know, I was a real doctor now. I, you know, I had that, you know, stamp of approval. The seal was on, and I was ready to see patients, touch mm -hmm. patients, just interact. So, you know, I felt like I was on my way there and I could see the end. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Now, what is your um, patient care philosophy, Nicole? So for me, I, I, my care philosophy, and I think pretty much all of my, par my parents knew this, I treat all of the kids that I see like they were my own kids. Okay. So what that really means is every decision that I'm making for your child, I would never I would never uh, make a decision that I wouldn't make for my own child. Okay. So that is pretty much my philosophy. Yeah, for me, it's um, each patient is unique, and just because someone else had something else done to treat their issue doesn't mean that the same thing is going to work for you. So um, I don't, I don't, I give options and a lot of options, and together we make a decision. I don't come in and say you mm -hmm. should do this and that's all the option, you get one option. I give you all the options and we work through it as a team um, to get a care plan just for you that's unique just for you. Okay, have you guys ever been questioned? I just wanna question your, your, your opinion about? I don't get questioned that much because I, I talk a lot to my <laughs> patients. So pretty much, and I explain a whole lot. Okay. So I, I take my time and it doesn't matter if the encounter is 15 minutes, I will take 30 minutes and okay. I'll make sure that they understand what the plan is. And when I'm done, I, I rarely ever get a parent saying, you didn't answer my questions or I don't understand. Okay. Um, that, that's a rare occurrence because I, I, I like to talk and make sure that they understand what's going on. Yeah, on my end, I get questioned. And the reason being is that when you're dealing with cancer, there is a ton of questions that need to be answered. I still talk about certain things that I know it always covers everyone, but then I get into the unique parts, and then that's where all the questions come in. Just so for me, with my numbers, how with these things that we have and know about on our imaging, what do you think is the best? And they say, if I was your dad or mom, what do you do? Those questions I don't like answering so much about if it was my dad or my right. mom, but I said. I'm giving you information because you have certain things you know about yourself that I don't know that you're not sharing with me. So I like you to make that decision. I could help you and I could tell you numbers and you know my opinion about why I think this will be better for you over this, but I want you to understand that each, every option that you have has certain risks and certain benefits and you gotta figure out which one of those risks and what benefits you're gonna willing to, you know, to live with. Okay, okay. Next question. In medicine or life, what is a lesson that has always stuck with you? What have you learned throughout? Houston? When you fall down, you get back up. Fall down, get back yeah. up. Yeah, that is the best lesson that I've ever learned. Okay, Peter. Yeah, um, don't be, don't be discouraged. Um, it's you always have to pivot in medicine. There's always unique things that will come up. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Peter, this question is for you. Uh, what do you wish you knew when you first became a director of your department that you know now? Uh, well, uh, I wish I knew that um, it's, you're never going to be able to please everyone. Right. You know, that, that goes with, every, with any sort of position, you know, no matter if it's in the medical field or not. Uh, but you work with it. You coordinate with, 
with pe with with folks and you make the best of it try to make sure that it's always you know patient care first all right, all right. and you guys have three kids three five and seven um, mm -hmm. how did you balance work and family life as a mom Nicole <laughs> <laughs> well uh, structure there's a lot of structure in our day um, I wake up really early in the morning okay um, just to get that time for me. <laughs> me time. Yeah, just mommy time, just me alone. I'm up at 4.30. And, uh, you know, in the afternoons uh, when I pick the kids up from school and uh, Peter gets home, we spend a lot of time with them doing homework. Okay. And uh, it's not all work and no play. On the weekends, we do a lot of family activities. Uh, you know, like prior to COVID, we would, on Sundays after church, we would uh, have uh, lunch and then we would go to the movies. Now we've become a little more creative at home with uh, just doing activities with them at home. Uh, so that's pretty much how we balance it. It's, uh, we do everything as a family unit. We take our kids everywhere okay. and we try to do a lot of activities with them. Yeah, and we just have to split it up. We can't just have one person doing it. We both contribute and make sure that there's a schedule that we stick to most of the time, and um, that you know that certain things are done. So you guys work five days a week. Uh, yeah. So you off on weekends. You Not know. every weekend, no, okay. but most weekends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Exercising, okay. running, walking. So that's the four thirty in the morning is the exercise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So Good. I get in that exercise at four thirty in the morning. He usually joins me around six o'clock. Um, <laughs> he sleeps a little longer. He yeah. sleeps a little longer, okay. but he gets okay. his exercise in too. Okay. Well, your kids, how do you treat your children? Like patients or, or like children? Listen, <laughs> if, I, if I treated my kid, my, 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 my patients like my kids, they probably wouldn't. I mean, I treat my kids really well, but I'm a lot more lenient on my patients than I, are, than I am on my kids. Okay. Um, okay. So I would say not entirely the same. Uh, when it comes to care, uh, the care is the same. Okay. But, uh, you know, my structure is a little different. Mm. <laughs> I agree. You agree? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you enjoy most about your profession, Peter? I enjoy meeting the patient and their family. Okay. Um, and I, I, I tell it to my patients all the time, this is not just about you, it's also about your family because everything that happens to you also will affect um, your family. Someone may have to care for you for a short period of time. They may have to care for you for a longer period of time, depending mm -hmm. on what's going on, if it's cancer or not. So um, I enjoy that interaction, you know, a lot with the patient and their family. Okay. So. okay. I work with kids. Yeah, I know. I, I know, mean, yeah. what more do I say? Right. I just love when the kids say the most adorable things. They don't have any filters, and they'll tell you, like it is. <laughs> that is what I love about my profession. And you know, the kids, they're so, they're just so pure. Okay. You know, they, they, uh, they're they unfiltered, they, they, they give you love, they give you hugs. You know, they're uninhibited by everything else that is going on with, uh, with us and it, in the world. Even coronavirus, they, they don't know about coronavirus. Right, don't care about so it. So they don't care. Right. You know, all they care about is the fact that I'm a kid and I want to play and I want to interact with my physician. And I, I love that. I love going to work to see them. Right. Okay. Well, how do you guys give bad news to your, to your patients? You got, you got bad news, you know, how do you? It's, it's always tough. And um, whenever I know there's going to be bad news, I always make sure that the patient is not there by himself because they're going to need that support from the family members. So always invite them in with family members. If the family member cannot come in, then I'm going to have them on the phone as right. well. But it's, it's never easy. Um, you, you give them time as well. You, you're not rushing through the process. You give it a little bit of time and not just the bad news. You got to find, is there a glimmer of hope in that bad news? And you okay. have to also let them know about that Part, that part as well. Same? Yeah, I mean, you know, in pediatrics, it's, when you're dealing with kids, it's, yeah. it's a very delicate thing. Um, because, you know, everyone looks at it as they're just starting their lives. Um, I, you know, in, uh, in my role right now as an uh, outpatient general pediatrician, I don't have to give a whole lot of bad news. Okay. 
But uh, prior to this, I was a pediatric hospitalist, so I have had to deliver bad news. And like Peter said, for me, I, you know, I take my time. It should never be rushed. Um, I also, if the parent is by themselves, I will ask them to call someone else to support mm -hmm. them. Okay. And also try to focus on what is positive so that you give them some glimmer of hope in a situation that may be dire. Um, it's, it's not an easy thing to do to tell a parent that wow. their child is very ill. Mm. Um, I, and, and, as, and as a mother myself, um, it's, it, it just, you know, a lot of times I have sat and I have cried with pa parents. You know, it's, it's definitely not easy, but that is the way that I deliver it. Okay, okay. Now, what are some interesting facts about you? Peter, we start with you. I'm um, just quiet, but humble. Um, he, is he humble? Yeah, he, he humble. is. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah, at, you know, people have said before I don't smile a lot. Patients have said it too, but then after, you know, getting to know me and, you know, allow me to care for them, then they realize how much I do care about their health. Right. And then they respect that a whole lot. So again, looks looks are deceiving. That's right. that's the that's the fact right there. And when they get to know me, they realize like how much, you know, I do care about everything and they tend to ref you know, start referring to your family members and other friends to me and say, yeah, don't worry about how he looks in the first place. Or, <laughs> you know, he'll smile at some point. At some point. Yeah, they, at some point then we start smiling together, making jokes together, and they're like, right. oh yeah, and then mentioning like, you know, when I first met you and you were so serious. and But then they, they appreciate it because they know I really do care about their health. Yeah. Well, I did some research on you. You, like, you love soccer. Oh, I do, I love soccer. Um, it's unfortunate that I don't get to play too much soccer anymore, but um, I love to get back to it at some point. And then your, pa your passion, biochemistry, bio yeah, so my, engineering? Yeah, so my passion with uh, the bioengineer is um, medical product device innovation. So I love innovation. I love technology. Um, hence, that's why I was drawn so much to robotic surgeries, and I, I do a lot of that for that reason. But again, I also want to see the profession that I'm in um, go further. So uh, with medical provide, medical product device innovation, I hope that one day I'll try to make some products that would also change the face of medicine and um, take it to the next level where patients are, you know, getting major surgery with just like, you know, a pinhole or a very tiny incision, if anything. Okay. So you, you like cutting stuff and making stuff? I do. I, I love. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like putting Lego pieces together. But except, <laughs> um, there's the emotional aspect on the other side. Okay. So. Nicole, some facts that we want you want to talk about. I'm shy. You, you're shy. <laughs> yeah, I'm so shy. Nobody would ever. Well, I think it. Peter's more shy than you. No, because he <laughs> looks like he's shy. <laughs> I am the shy that talks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. But I'm actually dying inside. Okay. So I'm shy. I like to cook. Okay. Um, I, I like to think that I'm pretty good at it. Well, what's your favorite meal? Uh, oh my gosh. Well, should I ask her? Her favorite meal is her. Well, her favorite meal is anything that she cooks for me because she <laughs> it, it's it's all delicious. <laughs> it's delicious, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It makes you know it makes her want to keep doing it. So not just cooking, baking as well. Okay, okay. You okay. know, making you know real fruit juices. That that's you know she's. I told her she should open a restaurant, but yeah. she doesn't want to. On the side, but right. Weekends. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no time for that. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll start with you, Nicole. Sure. What has been the, your biggest challenge in your profession or life? I guess in life for me, being a patient myself. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, when I was in medical school, I actually was uh, diagnosed with something called um, um, UPJ obstruction. Uh, it's right up Peter's alley. It's a urological uh, issue. And I actually had to have surgery, okay. like major surgery, uh, while I was in medical school. So I think uh, being a patient uh, was a challenge and it also was, it also showed me the other side mm -hmm. as well. So that actually helped me with my patient care uh, to empathize more with, uh, okay. with people when they're in the same situation as uh, I was. But 
yeah, that definitely was a, a setback for me. Yeah. Peter, biggest challenge in life? Yeah, my biggest challenge um, is is dealing with death. Um, you know, whenever you're dealing with cancer patients, that's always in the back of your mind. You know, death, and it's also in the back of their minds. So right. Am I going to die from this or right. not? So it's always, that's always been my biggest challenge. And again, we, we approach as a team approach. There's always a palliative care team that helps with that as well. But it's still never easy getting over that. You get very close to patients. You've seen them from the beginning. And, you know, when it gets to that point to the end, it's, it's still difficult. Right. Now, difficult question. As a person of color, have you ever felt like you were challenged by a patient? Or felt like you, you came up, seemed to be inferior? Let me start with you, Nicole. You nodding that head, so then. You know, there's been not many, but a few occasions where I, you know, you just feel felt, that yeah. way. Okay. Uh, and I, I don't know if it's so much uh, being a person of color in my situation. It might be a combination of that. Along with the fact that I was, you know, I went to medical school outside of the U.S. Okay. So I, you know, there's been one or two occasions where I'm questioned, like grilled about, you know, where did you go to medical school and stuff like that, which is okay, you know, um, that that is absolutely fine. I mean, I would want to know that I'm getting the best medical care as well too, and I would want to know that the doctor that I'm seeing was well trained. So I I get it. Okay. And and those are questions that I'm I'm happy to answer answer them well and then we go on to the problem at hand and I right. explain everything well you see that my knowledge is there okay. and then you're comfortable um, but um, I'll pass it over to Peter and Peter? see what he has mm. to say yeah there, there are times it's it's surgery it's world of um, cancer surgery so patients always want the best because they don't want to do something more than once they want the best and the you know, the first experience is always, or the first shot is usually the best um, chance to cure something or actually make it um, the best that you possibly can. So I don't mind that anxiety that they show through, you know, asking you questions or allowing you to feel like you're inferior. I answer the questions. I show them my qualifications by speaking with them. I, yeah. I let them know that your doctor is also a urologist and the reason why they referred you to me is not because I'm another urologist because I'm a urological oncologist and this is what I do. So I just remind them of those things. Um, so in other words, you tell them, I am the best. Well, exactly, <laughs> I tell them. And if they want numbers, I tell them, I tell them my numbers about you know, what my outcomes are. Okay. And I okay. said, I expect the same thing for you. So, but Perfect. Um, Question for you, Nicole, then we'll go to Peter. Who is your role model? I have many. Okay. <laughs> and I think in each stage of my life, there's been a different one. Okay. Uh, I think uh, growing up, uh, it, it definitely, and, and still is uh, in some aspects, it's, still, it's my father. Okay. Uh, and then there are certain times where it's my mother when it comes to being a mother and parenting my uh, kids. Okay. Uh, throughout uh, medical school, I would say, each one of my siblings had played some uh, role in uh, inspiring me, um, along with my uh, parents as well too. And and then and now as an uh, adult with kids, uh, still my dad, and still my sisters. And uh, you know, I aspire to be like Peter. He's a great <laughs> guy. <laughs> so you know, I, I mean, it's been different people as I move along with my life. Okay. Okay. Peter, who's yeah. your role model? Um, I've had a few as well. Um, early in my career, um, I had a role model. He's also um, a urologist. Um, he practices in New York. We still keep in touch. Um, he's a you know great you know mentor, teacher, um, surgeon. So you know he's the one that actually pushed for me to be you know a urologist and do the best that I can. So um, he was one of my early on uh, role models. Um, additionally, I've had other role models in similar position um, that I've done many research. I've also been like a urological oncologist 
um, that have shown me how to be a great surgeon. Um, and now my, my, another role model I have that I keep looking back at and has been around for years is um, Superwoman. <laughs> so, Superwoman? So, yes. So Superwoman is also my role model. And that's Superwoman right here. Oh, my, oh not, that's so sweet. I'm not sure how she does it, but <laughs> between taking care of the kids yeah, and wow. being tired and still cooking all these delicious meals and everything, I'm like, I, I aspire to be that, like, like that, but I know I'm not going to get there. So <laughs> it's, it's just. I love it. I love it. Superwoman. Okay. Well, this is my most important question. What role has God played in your success? A huge role. <laughs> I mean, huge. Yeah, for me, I didn't know that I wanted to be a doctor. I, again, I think he put me there and said, this is what you need to do. Okay. He also put me into my oh. residency program in New Jersey yeah. and put her there at the same time. Yeah. So I we'll mean, finish at the same time. So things just this fell, fell into right into place. place. So. I, you know, for me, especially through medical school, uh, you know, God has been so integral in, in me getting through medical school. He was always there with me. I was on my knees a lot. And I know, you know, my mom was on my knees and I would always, I don't know if you know this song, but there's a song that we sing in the Caribbean, Somebody Prayed For Me. Yeah, yeah. And my mom would always sing that song. It would always be in the back of my head when I was in medical school. Because medical school was not easy by any means. And there's many times they brought me to my mm. knees and I felt like, God, I don't feel like I'm going to get through this. And then I would say, you know, I, I know you didn't bring me this far to just leave me. Uh, so I'm going to just push through. So he was always there with me. And, you know, when I met Peter, it just, it, everything just kind of fell in place. It was the right time, the right day. The weather was perfect. Birds um, flying backwards. Yeah, there were birds. Oh, yeah. Those, <laughs> I mean, and, and you know, and the time I, I, I did my residency here in New Jersey, I mean, Peter was at this, I got into the same program that, I got in at the same university that he was doing his residency at. I mean, what are the chances of that? And we finished at the same time. Mm -hmm. it, it was, <laughs> so you give, it, the give. only thing is just God. So God put yeah. it all together. And we give yeah. him thanks, Amen. yes. Amen. Um, so it's, it's been a really good ride and we're thankful. Yeah. So God did it. Yeah. Yep, he Amen. Did. Appreciate no that. No doubt about that. Amen. No doubt. Um, what advice would you give to a young person who wants to go into your profession? So this is what my mom, so when I told my mother that I wanted to do medicine, she tried to discourage me. And uh, I think it was more like not discouraged, but challenged just to make sure that I was sure that I wanted to do it and not just wanted to do what my siblings were doing. Right. And she said to me, you know, Medicine is not glamorous. It, it is not fancy. You have to be sure that you want to do it. You can't be doing it because right. you want fame or fortune. Right. It is not glamorous. Uh, it is not an easy road. You have to be very, very, very resilient. Uh, you have to be willing to be knocked down and pick it all back up and keep going. That is the advice I have to give to any young person who wants to go into the medical field. Right. Uh, you just have to re be resilient. Just yeah. be willing to, when you get knocked down, you just get right back up and keep pressing forward. Perfect. Any advice yeah. for uh, So one, start with persistence. Um, after persistence, you need to have um, sprinkled with some achievements and then keep being persistent, keep being, you know, find, f surround yourself with folks who can motivate you, um, help you along the way, and then you'll, you know, you'll find that mm. you'll get to where you want to get to um, in time, but if it's for the love of money or fame, um, you're not going to last. You may get there, but you're not going to last. You're going to burn wow. out, you're going to fail, at taking care of patients the proper way. Mm. So. Now, if you had one wish, what would it be, Nicole? That dinner would be ready when I got home. <laughs> 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 Clothes would be washed, house would be clean. <laughs> Everything mm. would be done. <laughs> done okay. 
Peter, one wish. Well, uh, I wish I was Superwoman. Then I. Wow! Wow! Okay. Here's a tricky question. You both are doctors. Who's the smartest? Uh, Peter. Peter's smartest. Uh, why? Why are you saying? Uh, we both have our strengths. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think we both have our strengths. So if you, you take a bit of it of his strengths and my strengths, it's probably 50-50. Okay, yeah. okay. So combination yeah, so of both. Yes. Yeah, so I say her, she say me. You're right. So that, that's a 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, as we bring this to a close, any um, mm -hmm. closing words or comments for our listening audience you'd like to leave? Uh, well, um, Yes, don't judge a face uh, a book by, you know, the face of its cover. You know, get to know that person. Get to know, you know, if it's your physician, get to know that physician. Um, get to know their credentials. See what they're capable of. Um, and then you may f you may find that you are a great match for that physician because not all relationships work. So not all patient physician relationships will work, but mm -hmm. the ones that are compatible, they will work. And it's always great to find someone that you could, you, you feel like you could speak to them freely and they could tell you what needs to be done and, and not feel like that person is not really there for you there. You know, it, it's take time to know that person. All right, Nicole? I guess as an extension of what he's saying, uh, for me, uh, treat everyone the same. Don't judge someone by just their appearance, the color of their skin how their hair is done. Treat everyone with respect. Give everyone a smile. Don't walk around looking like you're all upset. Just smile, say good morning. Okay. You'll see what different response you'll get from that person. All right. Well, the very last question. <laughs> Here we go. What is the best talk show in the land? Oh my goodness. A word with, with Pastor, Pastor Webb. Webb. Hey, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And to my listening audience, we hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Until next time, may God bless you real good. <laughs>